Nā mihi mai ora ki a koto katoa. Uh, a warm welcome to everyone and thank you for joining us here today. Um, and as part of that welcome, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we meet today and pay my respects to the elders past and present and to the whakapapa and ancestors of those of us who choose to make our place on the lands cared for by the Tangata Whenua and our First Nations people. My name is Dave Sparks and I'm part of the Drupal South Committee bringing you this event today. Uh, we've got a great program of talks and discussions coming up. Um, the schedule is all online here in the platform and there should be plenty of time as we go through for you to look around and choose where to be. If you have uh, any technical issues or get stuck at any stage, live support is the uh, orange icon, whoops, other side near the top. Uh, and uh, we've got a great team here standing by and they're all ready to help. Um, you all have an awesome experience today. As always, Drupal South is uh, brought to you by a team of volunteers and supported by our fantastic uh, industry sponsors. And they are here online available to chat throughout the day. So feel free to get in touch uh, and line up a discussion or follow up on our topics. Uh, you can do this through the meeting hub on the right hand side of your screen. And so, yeah, I'd, I would really like to just give a huge shout out to those sponsors. Um, thank you for your support uh, from Accenture, Acquia, Amazie.io, Annex, Doghouse, Just After Midnight, Morphed, Pantheon, Previous Next, Salsa Digital and Skipper. Um, we really appreciate your contribution towards the community and uh, making this conference happen today. To kick things off, uh, I'd like to hand over to Abhishek Malavia, Managing Director of Accenture Interactive, um, looking after commerce, content and MarTech for Australia and New Zealand. Accenture have been great supporters for Drupal South and open source here in Australasia, and they are here to introduce our keynote for today. Cool. Thank you, Dave, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you that are watching this live stream. Uh, my name is Abhishek Malavia. At Accenture Interactive, we actually strongly believe in reimagining business through experience, and, and we drive sustainable growth by creating meaningful experiences that live at that intersection of purpose and innovation. And, and by connecting these deep human and business insights, with the possibilities of technology, we would design, build, communicate, and run these experiences that really make lives easier, more productive, and more rewarding. I actually met Dries um, for the first time over lunch back in 2013 when um, he was in Sydney. And I was really touched by, immediately by the fact that how humble he is and in, in what he's actually achieved with this Drupal community. It gives me great pleasure, actually, to in introducing to you Drupal's project founder, Dries Bertart. And he should actually need no introduction this, with this audience, at least. But 20 years ago, he actually wrote the first line of software in his college dorm room. And that became the Drupal that we all know and, and love. It's a great honor to have Dries here with us today as we celebrate Drupal's 20th birthday in 2021 and look towards the future. Dries is joining us live from his home in Boston, where he is based for his day job as Acquia's co-founder and CTO. And by night, Dries is still active as Drupal's open source project lead in his ongoing role on the Drupal Association Board to ensure that the global Drupal community is supported. I'm very pleased to present to you in conversation with Dries Bertat, brought to you by Accenture Interactive. We, Accenture Interactive is actually ranked the world's largest digital agency by AdAge and has been named the most innovative company by Fast Company with a strong and growing capability in delivering large scale Drupal and Acquia projects, uh, which you can find out more about um, by visiting www.accenture.com um, or actually connecting with me with a chat. Just feel free to reach out. So without further ado, joining Dries today is Drupal South event organizer, Dave Sparks. Over to you, Dave. And hello, Dries. Uh, thanks so hey. much for joining us. 
Thanks I hope for you're doing me. well. Thanks. Doing very well, yeah. And also yeah. thanks for that introduction, Abhishek. Yeah. Nice. Uh, our themes for the uh, the conference today um, is uh, looking back at 20 years of Drupal uh, and looking forward to the future. Uh, and as Abhishek I mentioned, we last saw you in person uh, down under at DrupalCon Sydney in 2013. And I think it's fair to say um, quite a bit has, uh, has happened since then, quite a bit has changed since then. Um, can we just start off by saying, asking, um, you know, how have things changed for you personally uh, in the last year or so? In the last year, um, I mean, I think despite COVID, which obviously is a difficult time for, you know, a, a lot of people, I, I feel fortunate that have done, you know, pretty well, you know, everything considered. Um, you know, I guess I've worked more, uh, I've traveled less, I've probably watched more Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, that might be true for a lot of other people. Um, mm -hmm. But in general, I've, I would say I've been very busy, um, you know, very busy at, at work and with Drupal. Um, you know, Acquia continues to do to do well. And so that's been, it's been very nice that, you know, both Drupal and Acquia actually have been sort of stable and predictable and, um, you know, that every, everything has kind of stayed on track, at least for me personally. Um, and as mentioned, I, I feel very fortunate about that, but uh, should probably work out a little bit more. <laughs> um, I can't wait to, to travel more and, uh, you know, come back to uh, Australia and New Zealand, for example. I, I, I really do miss the travel and meeting, you know, people uh, in the Drupal community, um, you know, in person, to be quite honest. That's been a bit hard for me to not be able to mm -hmm. have those yeah. in-person uh, interactions. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to have you back down here. Um, hang out, have a barbie and a beer and have a chat. So, well, yeah, very fond memories of... Yeah uh the few times i've been there you know i'd love mm -hmm. to i'd love to come back excellent uh, drupal itself um has gone through some some big changes some major architectural changes um starting with the release of drupal 8 uh late 2015 uh the the transition to drupal 9 uh, mid last year um overall uh what do you think the biggest changes have, have been um that came with that and their implications um, for the platform and for the community? Well, yeah, um, it's a good question. I mean, a lot of things have changed, I would say, in the last, um, I don't know, seven or so years that you're talking about. I mean, I think for me, one of the biggest changes is probably our release model and our innovation mm -hmm. model. Um, you know, prior to Drupal 8, we would do these big releases uh, every like four or five years and they would break the whole Drupal world, you know, <laughs> meaning every module would need to be updated or even like rewritten, right? And with Drupal 8, um, we've adopted a, a new model, a new model of sort of continuous innovation. So we have more frequent releases versus a release every, you know, four or five years. and and maybe more importantly, you know, we, we maintain backwards compatibility, you know, mm -hmm. at least for an extended period of time. And to me, that's been a complete game changer because um, it means we put more features in people's hands quicker and it's just a lot less painful, <laughs> if you will, to, you know, maintain and run Drupal sites and as well as mm -hmm. maintain contributed modules. So that that's pretty big change. Um, for, for our end users, right? For the end users, uh, mm -hmm. the Drupal users, but also actually for how we work together as a, as a community. Uh, we do release management, uh, et cetera. And I think it's been a great change so far. Um, I think it's been very helpful. Um, I would say maybe another, um, you know, big change. It's maybe more of, um, let's say like a market change is the, um, you know, the growth, I guess, of, of headless and decoupled architectures, as well as JavaScript frameworks, probably one of the fastest trends in the market. Um, and, you know, um, and I think all in all, we've anticipated that well as a Drupal community. I mean, we've been investing in that for many, many years and we made it core initiatives or a core priority, um, I think starting in 2015, actually, um, 
you know, with various initiatives, we've, we've since added JSON API to core. We have great GraphQL support in contributed modules. And so that I think is a pretty big change in the market. Um, and I, yeah, I, I think we're navigating that uh, pretty well. Um, I, you know, I would consider Drupal a pretty strong player and even a leader uh, in the headless or decoupled market, especially compared to, um, you know, so a lot of the tra traditional, you know, uh, content management systems. Like I think we've managed that transition better than most. And these are kind of two big things that come to mind. But as I mentioned, there's been a lot of other changes. But uh, I, would, I would, for me, these kind of jump out as the two most important ones. Mm. Thanks for that. I mean, I think that from a agency owner perspective, that. Uh, uh, the upgrade from eight to nine um, was, uh, you know, a revelation. You know, the the smoothness of that process, the the new release process, the the changes it's made has been uh, fantastic for us uh, and for the community. Looking back a little bit, um, there's been quite a lot of talk about the the cliff coming up with Drupal seven end of life in 2022. Um, mm -hmm. In our local industry and community, there's a lot of Drupal seven around still. Um, internationally, maybe 60% of existing Drupal sites are still seven. Do, do you think this is an existential threat to Drupal? Do you think people will leave Drupal because of that? Or is there a different way that you look at it, a different perspective? Yeah, um, I actually hadn't heard the term cliff. <laughs> um, it makes sense. Um, I, you know, I don't think it's an existential threat for Drupal at all. Um, you know, let me try and clarify that. First of all, I think, um, I believe many, many organizations, most organizations, you know, wait and wait until the last minute to do software upgrades. Uh, I've, I mean, I see this all the time. You know, companies, organizations, they often look at this as a form of kind of, I don't know, technical debt in a way, just like maybe how they have to upgrade Linux or a mail server or something like that. And, um, they don't do that work, that upgrade, until they really have to, because <laughs> um, you know there's no other, sometimes no other compelling event to do that kind of upgrade. So, what I think will happen is as we get closer to that sort of, you know, deadline for upgrades from Drupal seven to Drupal eight or nine, uh, I think we'll see an increase in uh, upgrades and migrations. And in fact. Um, you know, in talking to different Drupal agencies, Drupal shops, uh, many of them actually are reporting sort of record sales growth and, you know, a lot of projects going on. I don't know if that is true in um, in Australia and New Zealand, but I was, you know, recently talking to various uh, agencies in Europe and um, they're as busy as, 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 as they have ever been. And a lot of the work that they're doing is these kinds of upgrades. Um, so I think, We'll see more organizations want to upgrade because you know they finally really have to um and actually in fact they don't really have to because we'll have extended support for drupal 7 as well uh various organizations have um, kind of raised their hand and said we're going to provide extended support um you know which is great news uh which means that if you're not ready to upgrade you know you're still supported and you get security coverage um but anyway, having said all that, uh, Dave, I, I do think um, we'll see a lot of people churn. You know, we'll see people move off Drupal as well. Like I'm not ignorant or blind to that. Um, I think a lot of them will upgrade uh, and then a lot of them will move off to other technologies. And uh, to me, that isn't necessarily a surprise. If you think about it, Drupal 7 is like, what? I even, you know, forgot it's it's that old, but it's like 12 years old or something. Um, and a lot has changed in those, uh, you know, 12 or so years. Um, and, um, you know, I think like, you know, let's say 12 years ago, Drupal was a good fit for smaller, simpler sites. Um, but today, you know, fast forwards, 10, 12 years, and there's a lot of alternatives for that low end of the market, especially with the emergence of, you know, SaaS solutions. Again, there might be local um, local solutions in Australia and New Zealand and, and Japan, et cetera, but 
at least in Europe and the US, there's Wix and Squarespace and a lot of these other uh, kind of solutions. And honestly, they're great solutions for simple sites, right? And so the fact that the market has evolved, the fact that there is more um, kind of low-end solutions, um, you know, it's not Drupal's fault or anything, right? It just, it's just what it is. And um, it's not something to be sad about. It's not something to be to be worried about worried about either. I think what it has meant is that Drupal um, has, you know, a slightly different position in the market than it had 10 or 12 years ago because it has matured a lot. And I would say today Drupal has a really strong position in kind of that, you know, enterprise market, you know. Um, and, and that's a great place to be for Drupal because if you think about what Drupal is really good at, it's a flexibility uh, the extensibility, you know, all of the things that you don't get from these, you know, SaaS platforms like Wix and Squarespace. So, you know, the market has evolved. Drupal has evolved with it. And it's, it's very natural to see some of these simple websites originally built maybe in Drupal 7, uh, you know, consider alternatives. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I think, again, if you take a few steps back, if you look at the ecosystem, that has grown quite a bit. Uh, there's more Drupal companies. If you look at the number of people contributing to Drupal every year, that number has uh, gone up every year. Um, I report on these you know, metrics on my blog every year. If you look at the number of organizations contributing to Drupal, that has gone up. So in many ways, uh, Drupal is uh, stronger than it has ever been with, with more people contributing than have ever contributed and with a more clear position in the market than it ever has. But it does mean at the same time that we're losing some of that low end of the market. Uh, and we'll see that with Drupal 7. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's what it is. With this, uh, with this direction into the, uh, the enterprise space mm -hmm. um, and kind of uh, the, the focus away from trying to compete with those SaaS products, those low end products, what do you think Drupal as a product um, and the Drupal community itself supporting that product, what can we do or what do we need to do to remain competitive with your um, kind of your old traditional big eye and enterprise CMSs like Experience Manager or, or Sitecore or any of those things? Yeah, well, first of all, I think that Drupal is super competitive in that market. Um, you know, I think... You know, if you if you look at the enterprise, I think in overall Drupal powers like what one out of thirty or one out of forty websites in the world. But if you actually look at the enterprise market, Drupal powers like one out of ten websites in the enterprise, and we actually see growth there. Um, and you know, honestly, if you took all of the Drupal site in the enterprise, that is many more sites than Adobe, Sitecore, Optimizely have combined, <laughs> right? So all of this to say is, you know, we're a leader in the enterprise, you know, and it's supported by analysts like Gartner and Forrester. And we're winning, we're constantly winning in the enterprise. Um, so it's not like we're losing market share in the enterprise or, you know, we're not competitive today. We, we absolutely are. Um, but anyway, to answer your question, what do we have to do to, to stay a leader or extend our leadership even? Um, I know, I think it comes down to uh, a number of things. I think in the enterprise, it's really important to have integrations with other platforms, right? Like I can't think of a single enterprise Drupal site that has, a, has not one integration, <laughs> whether it's an integration with um i don't know an e-commerce platform or a marketing technology or a single sign-on solution or you know you name it there's a lot of possible integrations i think these integrations are really important uh, in the enterprise uh, and so i think we can keep building them uh, and keep evolving our apis to make that possible um, i do think the headless decoupled trend is important uh, in the enterprise a lot of enterprise organizations are not just building sort of an HTML website, if you will, or a classic website. They often have to integrate with uh, different front-end technologies, uh, whether it's a JavaScript 
a framework, whether it's a mobile application technology or even like things like a digital kiosk or, you know, you name it. I think that's important. Um, there's a big trend towards sort of omni-channel or cross-channel publishing, not just the website, but, you know, have Drupal be a, a content repository that can power a lot of different uh, applications. And then maybe last but not least, I think we have incredible strengths around scale and performance and security, right? Like pe when people think about Drupal, they think about robust, it scales, it can support very big websites uh, and it's secure. We have a reputation of one being one of the most secure platforms. Uh, and obviously all of these things are, you know, really important for any large organization and small too, but in the enterprise, that reputation uh, is really important. So these are just some ideas. So from integrations to uh, continuing to innovate uh, with the headless and decoupled uh, architecture to our you know strong focus on scalability, performance, and, and security, I think are all key ingredients to be successful in the enterprise. Mm. Yes, I mean, certainly for us in the market, we're seeing Drupal as a very competitive product and getting a lot of good feedback on those key issues, particularly around security, scalability, and performance. I think, I guess, what I'm taking from, from your comments there are that, you know, the, the industry in Australia and New Zealand is, um, you know, largely made up of small to mid-sized agencies. And there's no reason for us to be intimidated by the, the enterprise CMS focus. We could go in there and, and compete um, and deliver, you know, a Drupal product that's as good as anything out there, right? Yeah, I believe so. I think when I talk to small agencies, um, where they need the most help often is around, you know, sales and marketing, right? Like, mm. how do you actually, in these enterprise situations, you're often going through, there's a, let me take a few steps back, sorry. Like, so often, I would say five years ago, 10 years ago, there was a lot of inbound requests, typically, that agencies got. Like, people said, I want a Drupal site you're a Drupal company, I'm going to work with you. And the sales process was easy, very light, because the customer often had already decided <laughs> on Drupal. You know? Now in the enterprise, it's often a little bit different. Um, you know, Often a large organization will go through some sort of RFP process or once a, um, you know, do a proof of concept or you have to really explain why Drupal is better. Um, compared to other alternatives that they may be evaluating. And that's very common. I mean, if you're an enterprise organization or you're gonna spend um, you know, several hundred thousands of dollars or you know, whatever local currency uh, you wanna use, you wanna, you're gonna make a big investment. You, know, you wanna make sure you, you know, there's gonna be um, a due diligence process, if you will, making sure you pick the right uh, horse. <laughs> um, and so that is a little bit more complex uh, sales uh, situation where you have to understand your competitors, you have to know their weaknesses, and then you may have to do a little bit of a demo or a proof of concept. And when I see smaller Drupal shops, that's not something that they have historically done. And that's a kind of a, a skill set that they have to, to build. And uh, I think there's a big opportunity for agencies actually to collaborate uh, and share knowledge and best practices on how to do that. I know that sounds maybe a little bit kind of in, intuitive to share best practices on how to win deals, but uh, you know we're a global community and I think there's a lot of knowledge uh, that can be shared. So I, like in short, you know, Dave, I, I don't think it's really about the technology that much. I don't see any, I mean, sure, we can always make the product and the technology better, um, but I think where I see the most pain or learning an, an evolution that needs to happen is around uh, how do you convince these organizations to go with Drupal, and how do you win these deals because you're up against uh, you know large software vendors that have very well oiled sales machines. You know, I think that's a uh, that's a very good steer for us as a Drupal South community. To look at how we collaborate and share learning and knowledge around that sales and marketing aspect as well. Mm -hmm. I think um, you talked a little bit about the, the platform just at the end there. In your April Dries note at, at DrupalCon North America, um, 
you talk through some diff different initiatives um, that are on the table now for, for driving Drupal forward over the next little period. Can you talk a little bit more about those? Yeah, um, happy to. Um, so, you know, we've we have quite a few initiatives going on. I would say six or seven, I think, at the top of my head. Um, so maybe I can can walk through them real quick and give you kind of a very quick update. Would that be helpful? Um, yeah. So let's see. The first one is is what we call the Drupal 10 Readiness Initiative. I mean, it's kind of a mouthful, <laughs> um, but what it really means is, you know. Drupal uses a bunch of third-party components, as, as I'm sure most of you know, um, all the way from obviously PHP and MySQL. <laughs> um, and so like we want to do things like make sure Drupal works with PHP 8. Um, but we also depend on Symfony. Um, you know, and we have to upgrade to the next version of Symfony, right? So Symfony 5 or Symfony 6. So that's work we have to do. We use Composer. When we released, um, you know, Drupal um, nine, we were using Composer one, if you will, and now there's Composer two, the next version, and so we need to update Drupal to support all of these new versions um, of the different components that we work with, and some of that is a lot of work, you know, like for example, uh, CK Editor, which is our you know WYSIWYG editor in Drupal, uh, they went to uh, CK Editor five. Uh, which comes with a whole bunch of, you know, new improvements, but it was a little bit like going from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, where <laughs> it's like a complete rewrite with no backwards compatibility. So one of the challenges that we have is like, all right, how do we bring every user of Drupal that uses CK Editor, you know, 4, how do we migrate them to CK Editor 5, right? So anyway, we're sorting all of these things out and we're actually making good progress. You know, Drupal already works or Drupal 10 um, already works with PHP 8, you know, Symfony 5 works now, Composer 2, done. So we've kind of, we've been checking off a lot of these things uh, in general, but we still have some work to do specifically around CK Editor. Um, so that's a Drupal 10 readiness initiative. It's kind of like all the things we need to do so that we keep using the latest and greatest components and especially um, upgrade those components that will become end of life um, so that we maintain Drupal's uh, security. Um, so that sounds maybe a little mechanical and maybe not that exciting, but um, please do keep in mind that each of these new components uh, or you know latest versions of these components they do come with all sorts of benefits right like php 8 has new features and is faster <laughs> ck editor 5 compared to ck editor 4 will have new, new bells and whistles too so there's actually an innovation element of that that uh, is hopefully exciting to uh, a lot of people so that's one of the initiatives um uh, second one is um you know claro which is a new admin theme so it's a new look and feel for Drupal's uh, administration UI. Um, and it's um, you know very close to being ready. Uh, actually, it looks a lot better, <laughs> uh, which is a common complaint that we hear from people. It's like oh, it looks a little bit outdated, and uh, you know, Clara really has upped the game there. Uh, not only does it look better, it works better, has nicer animations. It's also more accessible, frankly. So it's kind of better across the board. Um, similarly, we're also working on a new uh, front-end theme. Uh, the name of that is called is uh, Olivero. Uh, it's kind of an out-of-the-box front-end experience. Uh, and it's kind of the same story as Claro, where it's kind of modern, good looking, more accessible, a better example of what Drupal can do. Uh, and under the hood, we've made a bunch of improvements too. Um, you may or may not be familiar with the starter kit work that we're doing, uh, which kind of replaces the Drupal 8 classy theme. Um, you know, anyway, so basically shipping more modern HTML or more modern markup, not just HTML, but also uh, CSS. 
and, and making it so that we can make changes to these uh, HTML and CSS more easily. So there's a whole bunch of innovation on sort of the look and feel, the back and the front end, and you know, all of these things are actually going pretty well, I would say. Um, Olivero, you know, we, we're kind of down to the final issues that we need to resolve, um, but lots of great momentum actually from people in the community. Um, so then we're also working, so that was like Drupal 10 Readiness, Claro, Olivero. We're also working on decoupled menus. Um, I know that sounds very specific, but the idea is uh, how do we advance Drupal's, um, you know, headless or decoupled capabilities, right? We have a good base right now, uh, but we need to expand the API coverage to certain areas. Um, and then also, we want to have some official components, you know, a React component or an Angular or Vue component for Drupal. And so we decided to start with menus because most applications have a menu and to use menus as a way to figure out how do we get in the game of building JavaScript components and making these official components that we uh, distribute and make available to JavaScript developers all around the world. Uh, and so that's one of the initiatives. I would say that's that's making good progress uh, as well. And then there's maybe two more that I want to highlight. Um, one is the project browser initiative and two is automated updates. So they kind of go hand in hand a little bit, I would say. Uh, but the project browser, the idea is that we make it a lot easier for people to discover uh, modules uh, to use and then also make it much easier to install them. So it's really focused on more novice new users, people new to Drupal, maybe less technical people too. Um, you know, right now, if you wanna extend Drupal, we've all, we've all done this. <laughs> you need to go to drupal.org, you have to find the module, and then you need to kind of figure out a way to install it. And very often that resolves um, requires you to use Git or Composer. And for a lot of people, uh, that's hard. You know, there's a lot of steps <laughs> from going to Drupal.org to finding your module to then figuring out how to get it enabled, right? So the idea is um, how can we make that a lot easier by leveraging or by building a in Drupal project browser? So, you know, very similar to maybe WordPress where you can go and install a, a plugin right from within your WordPress site. And, and frankly, how most software works today, including your iPhone and uh, Samsung smartphones, they all allow you, they all have some sort of app store <laughs> that makes it really easy for anyone uh, to install um, you know, apps in, or in our case, modules. So that's a project browser module uh, pr initiative. We have, um, you know, done done some good work on that. We have a proof of concept that's that's working. We're working with the Drupal Association on making sure we have the right APIs, uh, etc. And then the automated updates uh, initiative, and maybe the last one I'll highlight, um, is all about. Um, obviously, once you have installed the module, how do you make it easier to keep them up to date? And uh, automated updates. The goal is to um you know automatically update modules <laughs> when new versions come come out and we're going to start with security updates uh, but in the future we also want to do you know other kinds of upgrades minor feature releases etc and um you know i think a lot of these features like the project browser and the automated updates they're kind of table stakes in the in the rest of the world and um it's important that we have those too so, um, yeah, these are some some of the key initiatives. That's a that's a great range of stuff. I mean, from nuts and bolts um, activity mm -hmm. uh, through to kind of um, kind of hot right now modern front end UX UI components. Um, that's all quite exciting stuff. To deliver on those initiatives um, across the Drupal community is going to require some significant contribution. Uh, mm -hmm. And we've heard a little bit here about the, the Drupal Certified Partner Program that the Drupal Association is in the process of rolling out. Um, what can we do here locally uh, in Australia or New Zealand 
to play our part with that um, and play our part in the long-term success. Yeah, I mean, I think the long-term success of Drupal depends um, on Drupal being a great product, right? I think we're, we're uh, you know, I think everything depends on Drupal being great. <laughs> um, if Drupal isn't great, nothing else matters, right? And so that's why it's really important that we keep innovating and keep making improvements to Drupal. And so um, that's why code contributions as an example are very important and you know other kinds of contributions are important too don't get me wrong but um making the product better is is kind of the most important thing let's say um uh and so that's what everybody can do to help you know find your way to contribute and if you can contribute code and help us innovate in in a in a good long term direction that that's super valuable and so the idea of the you know Drupal certified partner program is to actually reward those organizations that contribute not just code but all kinds of contributions um, and you know we believe that if we help these companies that contribute be successful that in turn you know drupal will be successful so maybe to expl elaborate on that a little bit um you know there's a lot of great contributors um but let's say you know previous next to name one um you know let's say for every hundred thousand dollars that they earn <laughs> or make from projects, maybe, you know, 10,000 goes back to the Drupal projects or, you know, 5,000 doesn't really matter. Uh, versus maybe when a Drupal project of that size go to another organization that doesn't contribute anything back to Drupal at all, right? The idea is like, why would we as a Drupal project try and funnel business to these organizations that don't contribute back at all? Like we don't, gain that much from it. I mean, we still gain some from that because it helps, you know, give visibility to Drupal. But, you know, frankly, we're better off <laughs> routing the, the projects to those organizations that contribute um, or contribute more. And so that's a little bit the idea of the certification program. How can we recognize those organizations that contribute and then incentivize them to contribute more, but also how do we incentivize organizations that don't contribute uh, to actually start contributing? And by sort of labeling organizations as certified, uh, we can raise their visibility, we can incur increase their competitiveness in, in maybe sales uh, situations. And so we want to reward those organizations that contribute. So that's a little bit the idea. So um you know please do contribute or continue to contribute where, when you can not not everybody can but when you can please contribute and in return we will try and recognize those contribution and create visibility for you and help you uh, be successful as an organization that's a little bit the idea that sounds great and i think uh just a quick uh, shout out to the uh audience there if anyone is looking for a way to to start the uh, contribution journey or get involved. We've got the virtual sprint tomorrow as a, a great opportunity to um, get some mentoring from people who are uh, leading contributors um, and and get a start with that. Uh, now, I think we'll move on to the next section now. Um, before the event, we, we crowdsourced from the community, from the audience that's here today, um, some curly questions for you. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we'll start with a hard one. Um, say you've got a time machine and you can go back in time and change one decision you've made in as your role um as hmm. drupal project lead um what decision would that be and why well that's a great question um i would probably go back all the way to the beginning of drupal <laughs> um and so when i started drupal i built it for myself and i was a developer and in building Drupal for myself, I didn't really care at all about the end user experience. Like I was my own end user, 
and I was a very, very technical end user. Um, and in doing so, the early adopters of Drupal were kind of like-minded people. There were other developers, hardcore developers, if you will, that didn't really care about the sort of look and feel or user experience of Drupal. And that caused a little bit of a flywheel or a snowball effect, whatever you want to call it, where for a long time, we didn't really pay enough attention to user experience. And I think starting in 2008, I've been really working hard to try and change that. You know, we launched many initiatives. I even uh, spent money bringing in third parties to help us do UX work and redesign the admin UI and all of these things. And, you know, we have evolved quite a bit. Don't get me wrong. I think it's many, 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 many times better than it used to be. Uh, but looking back, Dave, to answer your question, I wish I had created a culture of, of, um, of more focus on end user experience. Um, I, I think that would have served Drupal well and, um, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good answer to a hard question. Yeah. Uh, while we've still got you in that time machine, uh, what does Drupal look like in, uh, in another 20 years, 20 years down the road, where are we? Oh, well, it's a great question too. Um, not sure exactly what Drupal will look like, obviously, but I think, um, and I, I've spoken about this at um, Dries notes, but um, I take I take some inspiration from uh, Jeff Bezos, the you know founder of of Amazon, and until recently the CEO of Amazon, and I read an interview of him once, and um, you know, the journalist or the reporter asked this kind of question, <laughs> you know, where will Amazon be in 10 years? And uh, and Bezos responded and he said, it's actually, you know, the wrong question to ask. <laughs> the way they do strategy at Amazon is not trying to predict the future or, you know, maybe to put it, you know, better not to, to chase a, a shiny object or trying to be the next big thing, whatever is kind of emerging. Uh, and instead, he said, the way we approach this is we, we ask ourselves, um, what hasn't changed in the last 10 years and will is unlikely to change in the next 10 years. Um, I thought it was a great way to approach it. And for, and like in the case of Amazon, it was uh, customers will want faster shipping. That was true 10 years ago. It's true today. And it's most likely true, uh, you know, 10 years from today. Um, and so then, you know, Amazon has spent billions and billions of dollars trying to make shipping faster. And in, in their minds, in, in Jeff Bezos's minds, that's a very safe investment. Uh, and similarly, uh, I, I've, I've, I've tried to apply that kind of thinking to Drupal. And here's a few things that I know. <laughs> uh, there's a few like long-term trends, you know, multi-decade trends, I think. One is the importance of user experiences. And we talked a little bit about that in the previous question, but it's the user experience of any product. It's not a Drupal specific answer here. Has to become better and better and better, <laughs> right? end users expect things to become easier, faster, and simpler. Um, and so I think that we're going to be investing 10 years from now, we're going to still be talking about how we need to make Drupal easier to use because um, it's a never ending goal. Uh, similarly, we do know that uh, 10 years from today, organizations will have more content. Like, you know, 10 years ago, organizations had some content. Today, they probably have a hundred times more content than 10 years ago and 10 years from today they probably have a, another hundred times more content than they have today and so we do know content management will will be a big problem 10 years from now it, that problem will not go away and because of that um drupal will most likely not go away assuming we keep you know up with the times uh, but the pro the fundamental problem that drupal solves will not go away right in fact it will get worse and the need for drupal will increase and so we, we need to think about how do we manage a, a hundredfold increase in content 
uh, and how do we help kind of make that easier to manage and maintain? Um, I think security will become a bigger issue. Again, 10 years ago, you know, security was important, compliance was important, uh, or maybe actually to back up from that, like risk management <laughs> wasn't that, that big of a deal. And it could be, you know, data risks, compliance risks, security risks, all these kinds of risks, privacy related risks, uh, weren't, not all of those were a big deal 10 years ago. Today, a lot of them are a big deal. <laughs> uh, it, it just privacy and, and, and data security has become a big topic. And I can tell you, I feel 100% confident. I don't have a crystal ball or time machine, but I can. I feel very, very confident that 10 years from now, that's an even bigger problem than it is today. And so again, Drupal is in a great position for those things today, where as, I, as we spoke about, have a great reputation. Uh, around these things, but we also have to keep thinking about how do we make it even better, right? And so I hope uh, 10 years from now, uh, Drupal will be an even better content management system uh, focused on managing many more types of content and much larger volumes of content. And I think will be even more um, sort of robust, I guess, in terms of security and privacy and, and all of these things. And I think, I think it's entirely doable. You know, we have all the ingredients to make that happen. I think that's a uh, that that's a great way of framing up the thinking in that space as well. Um, if I, you know, listening to what you're saying there, yes, security is is um, front and center for us now. And, and five years ago, probably was a tick box, and now it is where we're spending a lot of our time. And that uh, that exponential growth in content volume and variety is a really uh that's a that's a gnarly problem to try and get in and solve as well uh, is there a uh, feature development or initiatives for for drupal 10 and then drupal 11 that are on the roadmap uh for dealing specifically with that is that something you could talk to um, now or is <laughs> is that too too big a picture to, to cover we haven't we haven't formalized any drupal 11 initiatives i would say um but you know just a few ideas you know one is i think uh, i'd love to see us kind of evolve um our entity system and views especially from a user experience point of view i think we have real real strengths in content modeling content types and and those kinds of things but it's still a bit hard to use you know and we haven't really tried and improved the user experience of that like how do we make it super easy to build content models and then to, you know, kind of use views on top of that. And I think that's important because it touches all of these things that I just mentioned, like how do we improve the user experience and also how do we help organizations manage uh, content, uh, you know, better. And we did a lot of work on that. I think it was Drupal 7, <laughs> uh, but like, the, the last time we really kind of revamped uh, a lot of these things, I would say it was, you know, 10 plus years ago, especially on the user experience side. And so I'd love to see us innovate uh, there. Um, and then one of the attendees, uh, Alec, Alexer, I'm not sure how to best pronounce it, but he or she uh, mentions, you know, artificial intelligence, you know, may, maybe becoming influential or important in this. And I, and I do agree with that. You know, I think in the future, um, we'll have so much content um, that machine learning can help with a lot of kind of automations, whether it's classification of content, etc. but also content creation, you know, or maybe not like create the content 100%, but maybe like think about it as assistive writing or something as you're writing an article or, you know, a piece of content, maybe a machine learning algorithm can help you write it better. You know, let's kind of think about it like a spell checker, uh, but, you know, many times more powerful, um, maybe help you pick the right words depending on who you're writing for, because you use different language and words when maybe talking to, uh, you know, a kid versus an adult um or you know a specialist in a certain domain um you know i think these assistive technologies i think will come into the forefront um 
we don't have initiatives around this for Drupal right now, but I, I would encourage people to experiment with those things, uh, maybe in contributed modules, et cetera. Uh, I think that that's pretty, pretty cool stuff. To um, kind of anticipate these, uh, these new technologies and new approaches, uh, do, you, do you think there's a, a case or a, um, a contemplation of a, a radical re-architecting of Drupal? I mean, example, one of the questions I have here is, would we ever see Drupal core being decoupled from the CMS features so that it's purely a development framework and then you're working on that, um, that content management from an integration point of view? Mm -hmm. um... It's a good question. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure I have a good answer to that right now, to, to be quite honest. I think I can see the pros and cons of that, you know, but I do think the strength of Drupal is that we're actually like sort of an integrated solution where, you know, yes, we're great for developers. Uh, but we also have great UIs uh, for like less uh, technical people. And I actually think um, it makes things maybe a little bit harder in some ways, but it also gives us a really unique advantage compared to the sort of the, you know, like just plain frameworks. I mean, if you want to use a framework, um, you know, there's probably great frameworks you can use today. <laughs> so I don't know. I have to think a little bit more about that question. Um, yeah. No, no, I'm not, I, a, I, I'm not opposed to that kind of decoupling, uh, but uh, I'm also nervous about maybe losing our editorial capabilities because I think that's why a lot of people use Drupal. It's because they get the best of both worlds in a way. Yes, I, I mean, I think I agree with you on that one. There, uh, the our, you know, our love of Drupal within our uh, organization and team is because developers and site builders and, and content editors are all sharing the same language. And, and that's really the special source for us. That's where the magic happens. Um, I think over the last five years, we've been on a journey kind of with decoupled. Um, mm -hmm. I think five years ago, I was probably a decoupled skeptic. Um, and now I'm a, uh, a firm fan, I guess. I think that things have come along mm -hmm. in that space. Um, you've talked a little bit about decoupled being part of the roadmap for the future. Um, do you think that Drupal will settle on a, a front end, a preferred front end framework for that? Or will you leave that to, to other people and provide an integration layer? I don't, I don't think we'll settle <laughs> on a single front end framework. I think uh, there's lots of different frameworks out there. Uh, they all have their pros and cons. Um, and, um, there's a lot of innovation happening in the front end framework space. It feels like every six months there is another favorite framework <laughs> um, of, of a lot of people. So in a, in a way there's, it's, it's moving too fast. Uh, so to that extent, I think it's more beneficial for us to keep an open mind, if you will, and, and, and work with different uh, front end technologies. And for me, that's especially true for people that want to build a custom front end to Drupal. Now, as it relates to Drupal's own backends, um, you know, I think if we wanted to modernize our backends um, using JavaScript, so we get more of that interactivity, etc. Obviously, we would need to pick one technology, right? We would have to say, you do whatever you want on the front end to build your own front end application on top of Drupal, but Drupal itself, <laughs> Drupal's own backend, where you create content. Um, you know, obviously, if we were to modernize that with JavaScript, you would have to pick one. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a real strength of Drupal that we can kind of choose our dance partners for that, for that mm -hmm. decoupled front end, uh, depending on whatever music the, the client wants. Mm -hmm. I think we've got time for maybe two more questions. Um, here's maybe a little bit of a, a less technical one for you. Um, I think everyone everyone uh, knows that, that Drupal 9.2.4 is the best version of Drupal. Um, but is there a version of Drupal that's that's a personal favorite? Um, oh. Maybe from, from some simpler times past, oh. have you got have you got a, a, a pet Drupal that you've got a fondness for uh, back in the day? Hmm. Let's see. Um, 
I would say the it's hard, but I would say um, there's a couple of big ones. You know, I think maybe it was Drupal two or Drupal three uh, introduced the module system. <laughs> um, and that I think was a big deal. Obviously, you know, uh, that was kind of one of these, um, you know, moments I guess in Drupal's history that changed the game, right? Because today we have what like, you know, tens of thousands or you know of modules, <laughs> and that's been a game changer. So I don't know what version that is, but it was very very early on in the in the lifetime of Drupal, and uh, I I think I made uh, three major versions in one year. Like one, two, and three were all like within one year, um, and a lot of it was inspired by Linux, actually the modular architecture. Uh, so that was one. I think the other one might be where we moved CCK into Drupal. And again, I don't recall. Maybe it was Drupal five, maybe six. I'm not sure, but obviously CCK has been a game changer for Drupal as well. Um, and so yeah, whatever that version was, that was pretty pretty special. Especially looking back, it's always it's hard sometimes to say in the moment. Um, it, it's not until like several years later that you actually understand sort of the impact that something had. Great, yeah. Uh, and I've just got one last question for you. And I think this one this one might be from Owen. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a technical question. Um, to to finish on a Belgian note, uh, <laughs> waffle. Waffles or fries for you? Fries. 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 Fry yeah. guy. Nice. Oh, yes. Uh, I like waffles too, but uh, oh, if yeah. I had to yeah. choose, yeah. I would pick yeah. fries yeah. over waffles. Yeah. Yeah. Why not both? Get you know. Yeah. Why not both? If you can do both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that is that is us for time. Are there uh, any other closing comments that that you'd like to make or? Well, I just want to say thank you. You know, thank you for having me, obviously, but more importantly, thank you for, um, you know, using Drupal and contributing to Drupal. And you know, it's great to see that despite, you know, COVID, you know, you're you're organizing uh, this event virtually, and that it's attended by people from all over the place, and that you have a sprint tomorrow. So it's very, very, I don't know, it just gives me a lot of positive energy and, and it's very exciting to see. So thank you for that, you know. Uh, it's what makes Drupal what it is, so. Nice one. Thanks so much for that. I mean, uh, plenty to think about. Um, really appreciate how much kind of technical detail you're able to pack into to kind of those, those quick questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're welcome. I think, you know, for me and for us, uh, one of the great things about, uh, about Drupal, um, apart from its amazing ability to adapt and evolve is really how open and engaged you've stayed as founder uh, throughout the 20 years we've had so far. And I just want to say uh, a personal thank you uh, for that leadership and that service. Um, it's great work and it's inspiring work to um, us out here in the global community working on Drupal. So yeah. on behalf of the, the community here um, in Australia and New Zealand, um, massive thanks. Cheers, mate. Really appreciate your time. Um, and all the best for the next 20 years of, of Drupal. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you for saying that, um, you know, Drupal is the work of many people. It's not just me, obviously. Um, so while I, while I appreciate the recognition, uh, I think it's important to point out that there is many, many people, including people here, you know, in this event that have made huge, huge, huge contributions to Drupal. So uh, it's, it's truly, uh, the work of many people. So together we, we can make Drupal better. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Um, awesome. See you next time. Um, thanks for that. And thanks to Accenture for their support, um, support for this keynote and uh, making it possible for us. We are heading off into the next session in the next couple of minutes. So um, for those of you carrying on into the panel, um, you'll need to exit out of the session. Um, Go back to the schedule and jump into that one. Just a bit of housekeeping there for you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks again, Dries. And um, we'll see you all at the panel. Awesome. Thank you all.